Today we're spending some time in the green pastures of White Rock. With me on camera as always is Rick Von Schmidt. White Rock is a beachfront suburb of Vancouver right beside the American border. And here's what this good town looked like in the olden days. And speaking of the olden days, I've got an appointment with Hugh Ellenwood at the White Rock Museum and Archives. Hugh says he's got a file on someone very remarkable. All I need to do now is to find the archives building. I'm sure there's somebody around here who can show me the way. Oh, excuse me, sir. Uh, can you tell me which way it is to the archives? Sir? Stoneface, son of a gun. Ah, oh, here's the museum and archives here, Rick. Let's head in and talk to Hugh. He's handed me a file on Ruth Evans, who was born December 31st, 1931, here in beautiful White Rock. She loved her childhood here, saying it was a wonderful place to grow up. When she was nine years old, sweet little Ruth, he was walking on the beach and saw two lads doing tricks with silks and knots. She asked the lads if she could try. They told her girls couldn't do magic, it was only for boys. And Ruthie said unto the lads, I will learn magic and I will become famous for this. Ruthie sold berries to tourists and used the money to buy a book on magic. Every night after a chore, she climbed into her home's attic and practiced magic for hours. One night, teenage Ruthie was walking home fantasizing about performing magic in front of big crowds. She suddenly thought that Ruthie Evans was not a glamorous name for a marquee, and that night she changed her name to Celeste. After high school in 1950, Celeste Evans moved to the big city of Vancouver. She tried to join the local magic club, but they told her it was for men only. They told her she could only succeed in the business if she was a magician's assistant, but Celeste never gave up. She started getting one-night gigs and then joined some small tours. Eventually, she joined a military tour in Asia and started to get television gigs. She moved to Montreal, Toronto, and eventually New York. There were a few other female magicians by this time, but Celeste became the most successful with her stunning good looks and racy costumes. People were amazed by her trick where she revealed 12 doves while only wearing a strapless, sleeveless gown. People would frequently ask her where she hid the doves, but she never revealed her secrets. She had a 12-minute act with 15 different tricks. She continued to fight discrimination in a male-dominated industry, but she persevered. She performed for royalty around the world as part of President Kennedy's cultural exchange tour. And she even headlined her own show in Las Vegas. And during all this, she even raised a family. Celeste fought her way to the top and became the most successful female magician of all time. She wrote two books that are still available for sale on her website, CelesteEvansMagic.com. She won numerous awards. She's in several halls of fame. And her props are coveted by the world's top magicians. The current owner of the table in this picture is magician David Copperfield. At the various magician halls of fame, you can even find wax figures and mannequins of Celeste. She was on television shows including Ed Sullivan, Arthur Godfrey, and Barbara Walters. Her talent, beauty, and class is most evident on a game show called To Tell the Truth. You can see it on YouTube. She was supposed to escape from a straitjacket at the end of the segment, but the show ran late and the producers told her there wasn't enough time to do it. The same fire that fueled little Ruthie on the beach when she was nine years old was reignited, and she slips out of that straight jacket in eight seconds. Here's a picture from the show. That's Celeste in the middle. What a gal. And speaking of that trick the boys were doing on the beach, the one they said a girl couldn't do, it would become her opening trick for some 60 years. Celeste Evans... She passed away in 2017 at the age of 85, and her daughter said she could still do that trick right up until the day she passed. Hugh looked up Ruthie's dad in the old city records, 
and his address aligns with this house right here. And as luck would have it, it's for sale. It was built in 1934. It's 1,500 square feet with two bedrooms and one bath. It's listed for $1.4 million, which is a small price to pay if this is in fact the same house where little Ruthie Evans grew up and practiced her magic. The listing says it's on a big lot that could be subdivided. I sure hope they don't tear it down. Last year, Celeste's daughter, Ivana, scattered her ashes off the White Rock Pier, which unfortunately has been closed for a while for repairs. Because last year, part of it disappeared. Well, that's going to do it for today. I hope you enjoyed this little taste of old White Rock, as she once was. We're wrapping up on the same beach where nine-year-old Ruthie decided that no boy was ever going to tell her what she couldn't do. Special thanks to Hugh Ellenwood at the White Rock Museum and Archives. It's an incredible place and I highly recommend it. And thanks to Bev Sugarman for makeup and Jewel Hellmere for wardrobe. On behalf of Rick and myself, thanks for watching. And until next time, that's a good bee. Hey Rick, you still rolling? Yeah, you know, I could never figure out how White Rock got its name. I mean, it's not like there's a historic, giant, white rock right in the middle of the bee. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.